Hey everybody, it's Brian. I am coming to you live today, pre-recorded style. So instead of doing a live Google Meet, we wanted to try this kind of format where we have a pre-recorded session and we watch it live together. And we're using YouTube to do that. So if you look to your right, if you're watching live right now, you can participate in the chat that's happening on the right side. I'm in the chat and I will be dropping information in there. I'll be sent, uh, sharing some links. I'll be answering your questions. If you just wanna watch the video as a video, that's totally fine too. You don't have to be in the chat. You don't have to pay attention to it at all. And honestly, if you're watching this later, just as a video, you can't participate in the chat anyways, but just know that there are links over there that will help you, some things that you could check out for further resources. Now today we're looking at Jamboard and Jamboard is a collaborative whiteboard space that's available within our Google accounts. And I'm gonna show you some of the ways you could use Jamboard with your students. Now these can be applied from K-12. Uh, I've got three examples today of things you can try. And I'm gonna be switching between my desktop and my iPad. I've got my iPad set up over here and I actually have a second monitor. So you're gonna see me kind of looking off to the left a little bit. Um, but I wanted to be able to give you an idea of what it would be like to manage this from a teacher's perspective. Now, if it were me, I would probably have my Google Meet open on my desktop and then I would be on the Jamboard with my students on my iPad. You can open it, you can share a link, and we'll kind of get into those things as we go. So uh, we're, this is a new thing, you know, we'll see if it works. Uh, we're gonna make it as interactive as possible. Just know that during those interactive times, what you see on the video here is not gonna match what you're playing with, but it'll kind of line up in terms of who's doing what and when. Uh, so let's get right into it. So I'm gonna jump over to my Chrome window. I've got a Jamboard here. Uh, a Jamboard, you can open them from your Google Drive. You can also use the Jamboard app on your iPad. You can download that in self-service and your students will need that to participate in the Jamboard so they can get that ahead of time. It's very similar to Google Slides and its layout and feel. So I've got a slide picker up here at the top. I can open this guy up and show you that I've got four prepared slides for today. And you can do this the same way where you build your lesson around this, or you can just open up a new blank slide and you can do an example, you can annotate something, you can throw some pictures in there. It really depends on what you're trying to do, but just for today and for starting, it might be beneficial to kind of plan out what you want to do and then you've already got it prepared and you can open it and you can go. Just like Google, uh, uh, like a Google Doc or Google Sheets or something, you can share a Jamboard just like a document. So in the top right, you've got your share icon. You can share it with students as view only. So if you've prepared it as more of a notes style that you wanna annotate on, maybe they just have to watch it and you can share it that way. You can also share them as editors. So you can add it to anyone in Elkhart, uh, send them the link during your Google Meet session or through Seesaw or through Canvas, and then they can open it up and participate as editors in the Jamboard as well. So it's up to you and how you wanna do that. There's benefits to both. Um, on my desktop, my toolbar is on the left. Now the tools between the desktop and the iPad are different. So some things you see here in particular, the text box, um, this text tool on the desktop does not exist on the iPad side. So again, make sure you play with it in both places so you know what your students can and cannot do. And again, I would urge you to shift over to the iPad side for a lot of your playing because you would then uh, have a better idea of what you're going to ask them to do on each slide. So uh, I said at the start, we've got three activities. So let's just take a look at one right now. Um, in class, maybe I'm teaching a lesson and I wanna do a quick formative check. That's really easy to do in class because I can say, all right, give me a one, two, three, or four for uh, this particular question, or we're gonna play four corners and I'm gonna give them some choices and they stand up and move around and head to different spots in the room to show what their choice is. We can model that here, and this would work for hybrid students because we don't wanna be getting them super close together if we're in the classroom. You can also do it for your virtual kids at home, or you could even have a combined group of hybrid and virtual and give them this space to interact together and you're managing it through the Google Meet. So I've got a question that's gonna go into the chat, but I'm also gonna read it out. So I've got four animals, and I want you to tell me which one of those four is not real, okay? So animal number one is called an oxalotl. Animal number two is a gnu. Animal C is Eldila. Or animal four is Hellbender. So A, oxalotl, B, gnu, and that's G-N-U, and it's in the chat. C is uh, Eldila, and D is Hellbender. Now, if I were a teacher in class, I would want my students to answer that. So I'm gonna jump over to my iPad. I'm gonna, I've got the Jamboard open. I'm going to tap on the pen icon 
And now here are my choices for tools. Uh, so you could do something where you have them put a sticker on the screen for the vote that they would like to make. So I'm gonna use the check mark and it drops it in the middle, then I can click and drag this around where I want it to go. So if I were a student, I could say, uh, Oxalotl, that sounds pretty fake. There's a lot of consonants in there, and I'm gonna put my check mark here. So you end up getting a map of where students are uh, based on where they drop that sticker. They could also use the pen tool to put a check mark in there. So I've got the pen tool selected. I can change my colors, and I can make it a little bit fatter. And I'm gonna say, um, B is definitely the right answer. So there's a lot of different ways they can engage with this. Uh, if I jump back over to my Chrome window, remember I was just working on my iPad, those changes are here on my Chrome window. And I can show you in real time, I can draw another circle and it shows up on my screen. I have a little icon of who also made that edit. So it updates in real time or near real time. That was maybe a second delay. So this is a quick way you can do a quick formative check just using a multiple choice style question. Um, and your students can reply in real time. Now you could take it a step further. Once they make the reply, you could have, all right, we've got two votes for B and one vote for A. I would like my B group to make an argument, I'd like my A group to make their argument, and then you can rephrase the question and ask it again. And that argument could come verbally through the Google Meet. They could do it in a chat. It's up to you how you wanna manage that. But this kind of gives you a way to see where the group is as a whole, and you may even need to jump in and have some kind of corrective instruction take place. So that's one way you can use a Jamboard is doing kind of a quick formative check. So I'm gonna jump ahead to my next example. One of the things that we were missing um, is there is a, a, an app a lot of people use that would gather responses and they would have kind of cards on a board. I'm not gonna name the app because a lot of people still use it, but uh, it went paid essentially. And now I don't know about you, but I can't really afford out of my income to buy more stuff. So we're gonna shift over to Jamboard. You can also add pictures to these boards or sticky notes. So we're gonna do that on this slide. So I'm gonna jump back to my iPad so you can see what a student would do. Now notice, my Chrome window, if I show them side by side, as a teacher, my Chrome window on the bottom right there is set for uh, slide number two. My student iPad is not on that slide. So when I advance, it does not move my students through with me. So you'd have to prompt them to go to the next slide. So boys and girls, I would like you to tap to the next slide at the top. And now I can see that we've got people here. Uh, so just be aware that when you move to a slide and your computer is not controlling the student progress through this activity. So what is your favorite dessert? A simple question. This, again, could be anything. Now, if I'm a student, maybe I want to add a picture of my favorite dessert. I did this example yesterday. So you can see on my screen, I have a couple saved searches here. And I can tap on that save search and it finds those images right here in the app. I don't have to go anywhere. If I don't want to suggest brownies today, maybe let's say we want cheesecake. I can search for that. Remember, you can use your microphone to have students search if they don't know how to spell something. They can use that microphone and it would do the speech to text for them. So when I search for cheesecake, oops, I lost my... Let me get my keyboard back up and do that one more time. Oop, not image library. So I can pull from my image library on my iPad as well, just like a lot of other apps, but I wanted to get you the search. So if I do images, I don't want to search for brownies. I want cheesecake. I'm going to hit return and it will look for those examples. Uh, and it's a tap and drag. So this strawberry one looks pretty good. I can tap it and drag it and drop it onto the board. Get rid of my window. And now I've got my picture here on the board. And again, from a teacher's perspective, if I go back to my Chrome window, there's the board. As a student, I can take this. On the iPad to move a picture, you can either take two fingers and you can tap and rotate and move it around that way and make it bigger or smaller. Or you can tap on the arrow in your toolbar and then select the image and move it where you want it to go. So just depending on the dexterity of your students, you can use one of those two methods. And when I hit save, it updates on your desktop view. Um, so that's great, you can find a picture, but maybe we want them to do some typing. So I'm gonna edit the board and I'm still on my iPad. I'm gonna tap the plus button and I'm gonna add a sticky note. And this time I'm going to uh, add another example for um, strawberry shortcake 
kind of a theme today in my choices. You can have students, if you've got kids grouped up, they can change the color on the top. There's a little yellow circle next to the check mark. I can tap that and change it. I'm in the blue group. And so I'm going to add a blue post-it note. And same thing, I can take two fingers and make it bigger or smaller. I can spin it and I can drop it where I want it to go. I can zoom in on the board as well. So if you take two fingers on the jam board, I can just go and zoom way in and look at something. So if you've got a lot of responses coming in, you can make them a little bit bigger or smaller. So I'm gonna select this one and let's do this. Oops, let's get rid of that select. Selected the card too, but anyways. So you get the idea. We can gather responses either visually using the image search or we can use the sticky notes. Um, and again, hopefully you're playing with this during the live video. And if you have questions, you can drop them in the chat. So that's activity number two. I'm gonna jump to activity number three on my iPad. So a component that we're often missing from our online classes and even virtual classes is how we're checking our students' social emotional well-being. Now, with I'm, when I'm face-to-face -face with students, I can read their body language, I can see kind of their facial expressions, I can feel the vibe of the room. Um, if I'm virtual, that's really hard to do, especially if students aren't talking or if they're not using their camera for whatever reason. We don't need to get into why they may or may not. It's more the fact that we need to make sure that we're giving our students opportunities to give us that feedback. And in order to give us that feedback, we have to ask the question. Sometimes it's hard to get an answer to how are you feeling today because there's a lot that goes into that. So I like this kind of activity where I say, what's your gas tank at? And this could be at the start of class, it could be at the end of class, this could be a break in the middle if you're running a synchronous, so in real time virtual session. Just how's your gas tank today, everyone? And we can use the sticker. If they're on the iPad, they could also add some text. They, they don't have to use their name or anything, but I can come in here and I can grab a sticker and I can um, you know, grab the finger here and say, oops, let me undo that. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna say, I'm about there. Um, so you can, again, get a quick picture of where the group is and how they're feeling just using a simple line like this. And maybe they update this as they go and you can see how the lesson is progressing. It's that quick formative feedback. And this isn't necessarily limited to virtual. If you're a hybrid teacher, you could have them open this up and while they're working on different things, they can just update this during class. And if you have it open on your iPad as well, you can also see that group feedback to they're either getting it or they're not. I'm frustrated, I'm struggling. You can use the stoplight analogy with red, yellow, green. So they can put some kind of emoji on the green knowing that they don't really wanna be messed with right now. They're fine, they're good, they're going on. Um, if you want students to use their names, uh, because if I'm doing the stoplight in class, I can see their desk and I can see their face. That's a little bit harder to do here, but you could do the same thing with the sticky note. So uh, I'm feeling good. I'm gonna put my name in here and I'm done. And I'm gonna kind of drop it there. And so as a teacher, I know that Brian, I don't need to really talk with him, but maybe as the lesson goes, I'm gonna take my card. And again, you've gotta use the selector. I'm gonna drag it back here and I'm gonna change it more to a yellow. So I'm processing what I'm doing and I'm giving my teacher that feedback so that they know that right now I'm feeling okay, but maybe like a check in on me in a few minutes. So you can use this kind of structure for your students as well to give you that feedback during either a hybrid or a virtual session. It doesn't really matter, you get the benefit of both. Now, the last activity is similar to this one, uh, but to, again, when I'm in the classroom or I'm in the hallway and I'm seeing my students come in, I can tell kind of how they're feeling based on their facial, facial expression. You can't really do that now, uh, may, a lot of times, because our face is half covered by these masks. Um, so just, again, another way to get kids engaged in doing this. So how are you feeling today? How's your mood going? This one is a little bit more tricky to get up because we've got to get a, a, the keyboard showing. So the best way to get that keyboard is, again, um, there is no text tool on the iPad like there is on the desktop, but I can go through and I can grab the sticky note because that pulls my, my keyboard up and I can tap on the globe and I can get to my emoji keyboard and I can drop my emoji in there and I can add that as a note. Oh, that didn't work. Well, that's too bad. Well, that's why we don't do this live. I should have practiced. Oh, it showed up on my desktop though. So that's interesting. I'm gonna show you both sides here. Uh, let me jump over to my window and my iPad. So here is my iPad with the question mark. So that's interesting. Um, but on my side as the teacher, I can see that Brian, that you can see my icon here, if I zoom in a little bit, 
So I can see the student's little avatar. I can see that they put that. So this could still work. That's kind of a happy accident if I pull out my inner Bob Ross. Um, as a student, no one is gonna see what I put on the screen because it's not displaying the emoji, but as a teacher on your desktop. So if you have this open on your laptop set aside somewhere, you can kind of see what's going on with your students. So that's interesting. I'll have to think about that one a little bit more, but the idea is the same. If the emojis aren't gonna work, you could grab the stickers. They're not a whole lot of um, expressive ones. I mean, you've got happy, you're sad, but a storm cloud, uh, like I'm feeling a little bit melancholy. So maybe I'll drop that storm cloud in there uh, as a student. And then as a teacher, you can see who um, whose icon is on that one and you can kind of get that feedback as well. So that's a really quick run through uh, in a new format. So I'm, we're gonna look for a couple different pieces of feedback here. Um, hopefully you've got some ideas about how you can use a Jamboard in your class, whether you're hybrid in class with your students or you're virtual and you never see them face to face other than through the Google Meet. Um, I would encourage you to take a look at Jamboards. Um, as a teacher, you uh, you could download the app from self-service. It's in there. You can also open them from jamboard.google.com. You can also start a new one from Google Drive. There's a lot of ways to get there. We've got help desk articles on how to get started with that. So if you go to tech.elkhart.k12.in.us and log in, sign in in the top right, you can search for those articles just by searching Jamboard. Um, so this is uh, hopefully helpful to you. Let us know in the chat right now if you're still here or in the comments below what other ideas you have. I've also taken this and I've written it up as a blog post. So you can go back and kind of see the written out instructions on how to do each of these things and why you might want to approach them that way. So thanks for watching. Let us know what you think of this format and maybe we'll try this again sometime soon.